Hey gearheads and welcome to Grouch Talk. I'm Corey. I'm Holly. Back there is Tucker. Yep, that's me. And in this video, we've upsized from last week's minuscule, compact little hatchback, and we've got massive. In this, the fourth video on this 2023 Toyota Sequoia Platinum Edition, we're gonna see what it's like for our family of three. Stay tuned. All right, Holly, I'm gonna start this one off by apologizing to you yet again. <laughs> this does have two person memory seats and uh, some vehicles make it easier than others to set them. And by pure happenstance, I was trying to put it in the position for you and overrode it. it up. I overrode it. <laughs> so, but uh, we've had this one for a week now. You've taken it out on your own without me to sway you. We've had the sibling to this, two of them actually, in the Tundra and the Lexus LX uh, 600 F Sport. Kind of feel like I know where you're going with this one, but you, you may surprise me. You can. What, what are your you thoughts? Think? <laughs> I, I think that you think that it's unnecessarily big and it's not a truck, so therefore, not for us. But that's just. <laughs> what I have gathered over the years. What are your thoughts on this <laughs> 2023 years, Sequoia? Yes. Um, you know, it is really big. It is very big. But I do like it. Yeah. I, I don't know that it would be for us, no. But um, Yeah, and I think I mean, we'll get into that one. So so it does feel like a tank driving down the road, mm. right? Um, and it does, because it is a big car, you know, have the feeling of when you're stopping that it, it's going to take it a minute mm -hmm. to stop. There's a lot of mass. There's a lot of mass. <laughs> um, but you know, if you're used to driving a big car, mm -hmm. that's, that, that just comes with the territory of driving a big car. Um, I, there are a lot of things that I do like about this car that if we were looking for a big take mm -hmm. of a car, um, I like mm -hmm. a lot. Um, of course, kind of like what you alluded to, though. If we were going for a big honking car, I I liked the Tundra mm -hmm. better. Um, I like driving like a Bronco better. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. kind of, I kind of compare that to like the boxiness of this one. Um, but of the big cars that we've driven, um, I you always bring it back to how much I did not like driving the Tahoe, and I still don't. <laughs> I like this one a lot better than driving something Which like is that. saying a lot because Tahoe is the king of the segment. It's who everyone is chasing. And Tahoe beats this in a lot of areas. I did a whole video on the cargo capacity of this one. Uh, Toyota just ceded that victory to Tahoe. Uh, but this does other things well. Mm -hmm. And it has that Toyota build quality and reputation. So... But yes, there is a lot of Tundra yeah. in this vehicle, a lot. Like, if you put me down in this and I could see nothing else, take this giant 360 cam showing me I'm in an SUV here, I, I would say we're in a Tundra. The dash is lifted mm -hmm. from the Tundra. The interior, essentially, forward from us forward is all Tundra. Now, it gets a little different back there in the back for Tucker. Uh, in his child safety seat, which let's just get that one out of the way. I'll go ahead and show you what it's like putting Tucker's safety seat in the back seat of this one. It's not quite what you would think. All right, child seat installation here in the Toyota Sequoia. While this does have top tethers in the back seat, they're only in the center part of the back seat and there are no lower latches back there meaning you'll have to use the seat belt that actually is retracted into the ceiling for ease of use uh, for folding of that rear seat down. So not really a third row convenient option here in this one if you want to use the top tether on the back of the car seat on either of the outboard seats. It's just not an option. That kid's going to be riding in the middle of that 60-40 split bench rear seat. But here in the captain's chairs, 
I already mentioned how the design of them tips and folds forward. So once we put Tucker's car seat in place, the driver's side is the only way that we will be able to get adults back into the back unless they want to crawl through this center section here. Another downside to the tip and fold function of these seats is putting that top tether on the back of these seats. Normally in crossovers and SUVs, I like to slide the second row seat forward to be able to tighten down that top tether. Can't really do that here because this seat doesn't move other than flipping and folding forward. But getting to the lower latches is very easy on this. And with the power running boards on our tester, makes for getting in very easily. The doors open wide enough that I was able to get in and there's plenty of room in here to get in and really snug the seat down. It really is just unfortunate that I'm gonna have to like reach around here blindly looking for the slit in the back of the carpeted material on the back of the seat, find that latch, which I'm, oh, maybe, nope, missed it again. And just kind of blindly dig around back here or I can climb myself back in the third row, either through the center console here or uh, on that passenger side, driver's side to tighten it up. I did find the latch, got it in place. Now I just have to tighten it up. So as far as big three row SUVs go, I give this a C plus or a B minus simply because the seat doesn't move and doesn't allow for a lot of options. Okay. So, it is big. You like it better than Tahoe. That's saying quite a bit. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, I like driving it better yeah. than Tahoe. Yeah. Uh, and getting in and out of it. Yes. <laughs> well, we do have those power deployable running boards, yeah, which running help. Boards, which is good, but I will say, I feel <laughs> like they're a couple of seconds too slow. Yes. Or maybe I'm just like bopping in and out <laughs> too fast, but. They're just a couple seconds too slow. And if you don't know that they're there waiting or about to deploy on you, uh, they could get in your way more than they help, but yes. They definitely help a whole lot. Yeah. Getting him in and out, getting me in and out. Mm -hmm. um, but like you were talking about, I do like the design. I like the different color stitching is really mm -hmm. nice. There are some other really fun features that I like about this car that are just like small details that aren't in other cars and one of them is this little so secret window right here yeah so many yeah. different ways to get in yeah. and store stuff but yeah. i like you don't have to ask your passenger or the driver to lift their arm up to just grab something mm -hmm. out of here or access the cords at all mm -hmm. really quickly i like that a lot because we have run into that issue a time or two in our <laughs> travels <laughs> No, what are you talking about? <laughs> but speaking of that, it has like almost two, um, not handles, armrests, mm -hmm. like right here yeah. um, on the on the dashboard without taking away from the space, the yep. storage space. So I really like that. Yep. And, and like you said, tons of storage options up here. We have hidden cup holders over here. Both of our phones fit up here, even if the wireless charger never seems to work past 30 seconds. Uh, for either of our phones. I don't know. You've had, I've had better luck with it, that it, than you, I think. It's currently or not maybe charging. maybe I just don't pay attention. It, it's wanting to charge, but it is not charging. On yours or mine? No, yours is the one that's I'm actually charging. on it. Currently, he just moved it, but let's see how long it stays that way. <laughs> it, it's right. it's not historically worked for either of us, and I've watched. <laughs> but uh, You watch and then me. This. But it's, it's really easy. Yeah. The controls, is that what you're, are you talking about? I was talking TV? about the, the TV. <laughs> TV. Yes, the 14 inch horizontally opposed uh, screen in here with the automatic uh, camera system for 360 comes in handy. You mentioned how big this thing is, makes parking it very easy. You can get it perfectly within the lines. Yeah. Every single time. Yeah, I really enjoy that's another one of my favorite features is this all of the video mm -hmm. cameras around. Um, that help you park and I will just go ahead and apologize for anyone who's been in town with me driving this tank. It's been a year or two since my safari truck mm. driving days and driving it I feel like I've done okay but parking it 
Itinerant I went downtown oh. with the, the parking spots are parking lots are a lot smaller. Yeah. Um, I didn't hit anyone, but I was definitely the person in the parking lot that people are like, if you can't drive it, don't buy it. Well, you did. <laughs> it took me 30 minutes to park. <laughs> So yes, yeah, so we've got. But that's something you'd get used yeah, to. Tons of cameras here, and then we've got a camera in the back window, actually inside, mm -hmm. behind glass, in here with us for that rear view camera mirror. Seems like you're coming around on it. You haven't turned it off. I don't know how. That's the only reason. <laughs> so here, I'll help you out. There you go. Turn well, it now, off. now you need to lift it up because I can't. I'm looking at the back seat. Well, here, while we're in motion, I'll put it back on the camera. But it yes. does have it does have pros and cons. I mean, like if you had this stacked up, which you probably would have to do because this storage space mm -hmm. in the back isn't that big, um, it comes in handy. But like we were doing yesterday I was backing out mm -hmm. and it was basically useless because it looked like I was in the neighbor's driveway. Vehicle, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and and speaking of visibility um these oh my goodness trailer <laughs> they're for trailer right yes. the trailer package mirrors are I'm sure they would come in handy if I were pulling a trailer mm -hmm. but if you're not they are a hindrance I have to like look over the top of them to see if there's a car <laughs> yeah, over there. Yeah. Thankfully, I, it does have the light to know that the cars are... Yes. So, yes. Uh, if you do not intend on towing regularly with your Sequoia, or Tundra for that matter, because they're the same mirrors, don't get the tow package. They are so massive and they are in such a poor spot that cross-traffic visibility is terrible you, it, they create blind spots they are that big and the mirrors on big them ones. are so large themselves that water just gets caked up on it and we've had it it's rained almost every single day we've had this that you would have to rain x those to make sure that you could actually see them otherwise it's just a big blind spot for you mm -hmm. but there's a lot of blind spots in this one we have to pivot quickly pivot. <laughs> to the Tucker's wobbly head test because here we are, Brick Streets, downtown Tyler, Texas. Tucker, what are your thoughts? Great. Great? I think he's getting Great. a little sleepy. Like, Great. Uh, so I will note, I did not make note in my solo review of this one, but it has really become apparent even since I filmed it. This vehicle has an old school live rear axle and when it decides to bottom out, it kind of clunks back there. Uh, it, it pays the price for its old design, but what are your thoughts driving it down these brick streets? It feels like driving a tank. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, if you're gonna get a big vehicle, this is kind of how. Yeah, this one does have the adaptive air ride suspension, load leveling rear suspension, things like that. Again, going with that trailering package. But yeah, it, it rides like a big truck mm -hmm. and can't really hide all of that. Yeah. The other thing I would say that has kind of been a hindrance for me is these seats are just not that comfortable. Yeah. What do you think? I mean, it does have a lot of mm -hmm. lumbar support. Mm -hmm. I even have lumbar do. over here. However, I feel like it's more jarring than comfortable. Yeah, I, I feel these are definitely love it or hate it seats. I feel they kind of remind me of early 2000s. Uh, Chevy Tahoe, Chevy Suburban, that, those big overstuffed living room style chairs. They just, they're very big. They, they're, uh, yeah. You know what this whole truck reminds me of? What? They may not want me to say this. Lay it <laughs> like, on me. Like your grandpa's truck. <laughs> hmm? Not the work truck. Okay. Like your grandpa's truck that he's retired from work, but mm. he still wants a comfy. I, I could go with work, that. Work looking truck. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's the boss now. Yeah, I could go with that. I mean, it definitely feels like I could jump in here with my grandpa. Yeah, <laughs> and he, he would feel right at home. Very conventional right truck stuff in here. Yes, but uh, we are in stop and go traffic, so I have to bring it up. It is 
typically a point of yours, the engine start stop in traffic. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on this one? I haven't even noticed it. Let's talk about, this is a hybrid, right? Yes. I haven't even hardly noticed it, which is what you would want mm -hmm. in a hybrid, right? Like yes. you want it to do all the hybrid-y stuff without being the annoying stuff. So I will say the like way it stop. can accomplish <laughs> that is it's a hybrid in the sense that the electric motor is, instead of being like on an axle, is in between the engine and the transmission. So it is still powering when the engine is off, all the air conditioning, it stays on. Everything in the cabin stays on and running. You can even drive it down the road in EV mode, though you have no control over that. You just have to be light on the throttle and it'll go about its business. In fact, I was waiting for you to drive home to pick something up and I heard the electric motor noise mm -hmm. uh, as you were approaching over the sound of that 3.5 liter twin turbo V6, which in here, it's a fake noise. But yeah, I mean, it, it does a good job. The problem is, why why would you buy a hybrid? Well, the, to save on gas mileage. Yeah, do you see that yeah. green number staring at you? Yeah. That's not a good number. That's really not, it's 15.8 MPG is what we've noticed in uh, 200 plus miles driving this thing around. So, not great. Toyota leaned into the hybridness uh, of this vehicle for power more than it did fuel economy. And what do you mean for power? Like over 400 horsepower, over 500 pound feet of torque. It's got the tow package. You can tow over 9,000 pounds when properly equipped. Mm. Um, so, this is the only powertrain you can get is the hybrid powertrain, where the Tundra, you can get the non hybrid. Um, uh, mm. Pros and cons, but mm. you would think buying the hybrid, you would get really good Better. fuel economy. Going back to Tahoe, uh, we sampled the Silverado with the diesel engine and we're blown away with the fuel economy. If you want a vehicle of this size with good fuel economy, I hate to say it, get the Tahoe with the diesel, but there are other merits to that, this vehicle, and we'll get more into that. I like the easy access of the heated and ventilated mm -hmm. seats, which in this Texas week, we've used both. <laughs> <laughs> Very bipolar weather. <laughs> you know my favorite thing about them? Th they remember. Mm -hmm. They remember. However, <laughs> I, I, got, I jumped in this morning to air conditioned seats and mm -hmm. it's cold. Yes. <laughs> uh, so the Lexus that is based off of this platform had an auto button and it I knew liked that. Yeah, it I knew know. hot or cold seat We're whereas so yeah i know we are yeah. <laughs> but uh the third row seat in that was nothing compared to this now Those talk about the um air blowing in the back we've got this is perhaps the best mm -hmm. of both worlds not only do we have air vents on the back of the center console and controls because it's tri-zone and we can control it from here. But Tucker's got a vent blowing directly down on him from the ceiling, which we still remember the days of rear facing car seats in a hot Texas summer. Right. Like, yes, right. that is a must. And the third row gets ceiling mounted vents too. So uh, Tucker actually told me yesterday he was cold. Oh yeah. So I, I had to change his vent settings uh, because it, it was too cold for him back there, which is yeah. a huge win. It never happened. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he's got sunshades on the windows back there. And which the third nice row gets sunshades on the windows. Yeah. Like this thing, it is very nice and very comfortable. And if you want to see what that third row seat is like for an adult, my solo video, I climb in the third row of seats. And in the video where I show you the rear storage options, I have to talk about rear seat space in that one too. So two different videos I climbed back there. All right. Three, if you count the video where I compare it to the Grand Highlander, yeah. which some people may want to consider over this if they're not towing and hauling. So we've got lots of content on this yeah. vehicle. Go check it out. <laughs> Any other thoughts on this before I uh, pull out the window sticker? No, it? that's what I've been curious. You've been dying to I've know. Been dying to know. I do like this one though. Okay. What do you feel the price? I will say this is the platinum trim, which is like mid-grade for them. So it gets more luxurious than this. And 
therefore more expensive than this one. But we do have some options like those running boards, uh, like the tow package. So what, what options does this not have? That would be the next. Oh, so the next trim up is the TRD Pro, which is like the Tundra we drove. Very off-road focus, you're paying for the off-road tech. Uh, okay. The next feature up above that is the capstone and it gets nicer leather seats and some other niceties in here like real wood and things like that just a more upscale environment oh, okay so thoughts just interesting i am gonna go with 85. no 78 880. so not even breaking that eighty thousand. Okay. Which, again... That's, well, with all the features that yeah. this has, it's pretty good. It, it, it's nice, it's big, it's luxurious. To be the mid-grade, like, heated, yeah, ventilated heated front toe. and second row. Yes. We didn't even talk about tucker seats or heated oh, and ventilated well, back there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, that's nice. A lot of really good stuff in here. Mm -hmm. So... What's the lower trim model? There's SR5 Limited. Platinum, like TRD Pro. How much is the lowest? They start at uh, in the mid 50s. Oh, that's not bad so, at all. Yes. If you're looking for a big vehicle. Yep, yep. So. That sucks a lot of gas. We kind of alluded to it at the beginning. Not quite for us. Not quite for us. But even it, undercutting I, your guess by 10 grand? Or yeah, nearly? Even under, undercutting our guess by 10 grand. Yeah. I think there are probably some other cars that we would get before this. However, like I said, if we were looking for a big vehicle, we, you know, mm -hmm. had an RV or something like that mm -hmm. that we towed, mm -hmm. um, I this would be on the list for us to consider, for sure, I think. And there you have it. So if you want to know more, see more from Holly, some behind the scenes stuff, oh, go find, <laughs> or me, or Tucker, go find her on Instagram at Female Consumer. You can find all of our content at GT Garage Talk on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, all the things, YouTube, or you can just go to gtgaragetalk.com, read more about this and other vehicles we've tested. Go check out that video where I compare this to the new big three-row Grand Highlander. I think you'll be surprised on just how much space is in all three rows on that one. But until next time, gearheads, bye. simple <laughs> so your grandpa can read it <laughs> isn't it though it, it, yeah you know who i think would like this truck eddie <laughs> <laughs>